Hello, somebody. Before we start today's episode, I want to personally invite you to an Ask Me Anything over on Patreon. All you need to do is go over to patreon.com forward slash hello somebody and become a member. And on September 24th, you can join me. Ask me questions about anything you want. Go ahead and hop over there right now. Patreon.com forward slash hello somebody. Now. Today's episode is so good. I sat down with Famous the Rapper. He's a proud father, an independent artist, and there's a big surprise in this one. So here we go. So Famous, it's wonderful for you to be able to join us today. Your hip hop name is Famous, but your birth name is Robin Lee Dorsey Jr. Yes, I'm a junior. You are a junior. I got a junior too. Famous actually means Robin, the definition of it. Is that right? Yes, if you look it up, famous means Robin. Famous means Robin. So you didn't just pull this name out because it was hip and cool. It has yeah. deep meaning. It has, it has deeper meaning to it. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So you were born in Queens, New York? Yes, Jamaica, Queens, New York. Jamaica, Queens, New York. Are you still in New York? Yes, I'm in New York. I'm in, I reside in Queensbridge right now. And what is it about you and this vocation, this gift that God has given you? Why rap? Why hip hop? I was into sports at first. The first sport I ever played was baseball. Okay. I used, to, I used to live in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. Yes, I lived in a few places other than New York, like Puerto Rico, Connecticut, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Florida. And, and you picked up your love for baseball in Puerto Rico? Yeah, I, I started off with baseball. My favorite sport is um, football, though. Okay. Football and basketball. I'm very, like, very talented at that, too. Well, you're multi-talented. Got many <laughs> talents. That's probably my passion. Like, I have a real, a real passion for that. And when did you know that this was your thing? You know, so often it's hard for people to find that thing that gives them life, that breathes life into them, that they would do even if they made no money ever, it's just their calling. When did you know that rap, hip hop, when did you know that was your calling? Um, around late teenage years. Cause before I used to play with it, recite other people's lyrics and then like change up the song, like change up their song, put my own lyrics. I used to do it as like, just for fun, like rap in the lunchroom in school and stuff like that. People used to tell me that you should, you should, you know, take it serious cause you're talented at it. At first, I didn't look at it like that because I was more focused on sports. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I have a passion. For, like, it's not about the money. It's not about that. I do it for the passion first. Passion first, right. money yeah, second. Passion first. Hope, like, so hopefully, I, I feel a lot of people now they don't take time to put the creativity into their their craft. Mm-hmm. Like they don't put like I put a lot of effort into it. Like I read books to put in my rhymes, everything. Read dictionaries to find new words to put in. It's very clear that you put a lot of effort into this vocation, this gift of yours, which leads me to something else that it is important that even though people are gifted, you got to put some effort towards the gift. And that's really yes, what you're you saying. Do. And I try to make my music relatable too. I want people to actually feel the music. I, I feel like that's missing right now. Well, music is the universal language, they say. So you know what? You're, you're bringing up for me two of my favorite songs by you. Obviously, I came to get to know your gift through somebody who's close to me, my brother. Yes, I spoke to him. I actually spoke to him yesterday. You did. Yeah, we keep in contact often. Very good brother. <laughs> very good brother. Yes, he is. Yeah, we talk. I appreciate him. He doesn't yell. I tell him every day I appreciate him. Every morning we talk, and uh, he told me every morning his wife has to wake up to your music because he's waking <laughs> up to your music. He told me the same thing yesterday. <laughs> so two songs that I really enjoy for myself, Daddy's Little Girls. Now, forget yeah. profits me. I see a lot of me inside the actions. Inside I'm asking how I can keep them away from life distractions so they can go in situations knowing the right reaction. And Drunk With Jesus. I just feel like I'm chosen. Okay. So I want to start with Daddy's Little Girls, a tribute to your three daughters? 
He has three daughters. <laughs> Zaviana, Vani, and Lana. I could feel not just through the words you were saying, all I have in this cold world is me and my girl. Yeah. All I have in this cold world is me and my girl. Just me and my girl. It's just me Obviously, and my girl. your baby girls in inspired the song. Girl. That's also the reason why I do music for them. I want to provide them a better life. How did you set out to start to think of putting the words to that song together? They were your inspiration, but you were very clear about the world is cold and how you wanted them to, and I, I'm paraphrasing, I'm giving you my interpretation of the song and you tell me, you okay. wrote it, you're the creator. But my interpretation was this was a song to instill and reinforce for your baby girls that you as their father, they really are your first loves. Yes. You love them. They are a creation. They are a gift to you that they are beautiful and the world is going to see them that way. You've been putting in some remarks about how, you know, the boys, you got to beat them back, basically. Yes, that yes. their worth, you wanted them to know their intrinsic worth outside yes, of yes. another man or woman loving them. That number one, you love them. That's first and foremost. And you wanted yes. them to know their value and you saw them as a gift. So that's how I interpreted the song. It's like that, and I want them to know that they love. I tell my daughters they're beautiful every day, and I love them. I make sure I say that every time. I see them, I tell them I love them. Daddy loves you. I want them to know their worth too. That like love comes from within, not outside. So I want them to know their worth in this world also. As long as they they have parents that love them, but the the words just flowed out. The words is already in me because the love for my for my daughters. So it's already it, it was easy to make that song. Yeah. You also talk about how you, you you want to give them the the world and that they also kind of change your the views about women. Yes, was inspired by them. Yes, yes. Because before I used to have many women in my life, like irresponsibly, like the man I used to be, I wouldn't want my daughters to be with that. And now that I've grown, I've grown a lot now that I have daughters. So evolution is, is a beautiful thing and, and to be able to have that kind of self-reflection is beautiful too yeah and i'm gonna be an example for them because i'm the first person they, i'm the first man they love so i want to be that example for them amen to see what a man's supposed to be like yeah you took the words right out of my mouth you are their the first man that they love and so they will reflect and also their value comes from knowing that love from you just a beautiful song. I certainly encourage anybody, whether it's a mother or a father, but if you have daughters, to really play this song that Famous created. It's, it's a love song to your daughters. It really uh, is. Yes, it is. And I feel like like the world needs that today, too, because there's a lot of fathers missing out there in their child's life. And I think that's the biggest, like, one of the biggest problems in, like, the urban community, too. It's like single motherhood. Yeah, I think that's the plague in the black community. Women do take a lot upon themselves. Black women, I believe, and I need to go back and double check this stat, but I think it's 75% of black households or so are led by single mothers. Now, yeah, that's sad. It is very sad. Now, being a single mother or being the custodial parent doesn't necessarily mean that the father is not engaged in some way, but the burden of being that custodial parent is so heavy on yes. black women. It could be mentally draining on a woman too. Oh yeah, and it, it has a it has very bad effect on a child growing up. Yes, I agree. We need. Both I think we need parents. way more. We need more fathers back in the home. They're being misguided by other things, by media, by music, by just other things. Totally. And they got a lot of impressionable minds too. They try to do stuff to fit in with the wrong crowd just to look cool. Or we definitely need that kind of guidance, and black women need relief. So it would be yes. good. You know, there are a lot of surrogate dads, you know, out at uncles, people who children may not necessarily be their biological children. Well, yes. They pour into those kids, whether it's a teacher or a coach or someone from a church or a mosque. So I thank God. I just want to give a shout out to the fathers out there. Black fathers get a bad rap all the time. Yes. So I want to shout out the good ones because there are some good ones and there are some black men who have stepped up to help uh, commit their own their community. Yes, that's good. That's a good thing. We need that. It's a beautiful thing. 
Now it leads me to my next song, Drunk With Jesus. Got dressed quick, headed to the local spot to sip something. I get there, sit, slumped in a chair. I started with shots, but Cardi on rocks. Dizzy, everything around me just stops. I'm bugging out. That's Yo, what's this all about? In my peripheral, um, I see a bright light. Jump by myself. Turn around and hit the shit. Just using the drunken stage, whatever. So I wanted to flip that and make my own type of song original from that and i've decided to make drunk with jesus <laughs> it's just basically the song is me being drunk with jesus me having a conversation with jesus but basically the stuff that we're taught and like in the bible and stuff how the world is today how it's totally opposite of that like i feel like the world today is more corrupted than ever it's like Sodom and Gomorrah, it's like Bob babylon right now <laughs> can things change like how can i play my part you know, to make change in the world. I try to do my part through music. And that is a gift. In that song, when Jesus is talking to you, I mean, you're having this conversation about frustration and about what's happening in the world and the whole notion of, you know, has nature run its core? You know, ha is this it? You know, why is all these bad things happening in the world? And pretty much Jesus is saying, this stuff has to happen, has to run yes. its course until I return, you know, I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. cause I'm a church girl. So, you know, this song spoke to me on many levels. So pretty much the chaos and the pain, the ups and the downs and the turnarounds, like all of these things or the yin and the yang, all of these things are necessary yeah, to happen for his, for his return. For his return. Yeah. I'm just looking for answers. That's basically it. I'm looking okay. for answers and how can I do my part? Yeah, I wish more of us asked how we could do our part. And then stay on your purpose. Yes. In that song, it was not get caught up in everything that's happening around you so much so that you're knocked off your purpose. Yes, I think that everybody needs to focus on their purpose. I think that's the main thing people need to focus on with their purpose in life is. And to know what it is, first you got to understand what it is. Yes, you got to understand that, yes. Yeah. You got to understand yourself. That's why you got you to gotta learn yourself. A lot of people don't know who they are. True that. I really, I really, truly enjoyed that that song. I, I must have, I've listened to that song at least ten times. So hopefully, that's one of my favorites, actually. Good. By the time we talk again, I might have it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like that song. Yeah, it's, I think it's, I think it's creative. It is. It's, it's deep. And people can relate. Yeah, whether they're religious or not, I believe that there's a lot for everybody in both of the two songs that I really like, and I know that you have so many others, but I wanted to pick my favorite. And when I do my music, I try not to be like too preachy. I try to still keep the entertainment value in it. Yeah. I don't want to come off too preachy because I could, but I don't want to do that because it won't be entertaining. People probably be bored. So I try to throw little bits and pieces of wisdom into it and drop jewels on it, and you can get you know what you take out of it. Now, who who influences you besides your daughters? Who are the other influencers in your life? As far as the music goes, my my biggest influence was Nas. Nas and Jay Z, they're probably my biggest influence. I like the storytelling from them. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to them because we come from the same parts. The expression of African Americans and our ancestors. I mean, hip hop yeah. is an amalgamation of all of that the blues, the, the jazz. Yes. Yeah, all of that, right? It's not just the rapping, it's DJing, it is yeah, dancing, graffiti, it's graffiti. It's DJing, graffiti. Yes. Yeah, it's all of it. Educators, it's, oh, it's like a, it's, it's a cultural movement, but it is very much rooted in our experience in America pre the name of hip hop. I mean, I can see it in the dance and the way we express ourselves throughout yeah, history. Yes. And even going back to the continent itself. So we go old school in the 70s and the 80s, you know, the Sugar Hill Gang comes to mind, yes. Rapper's Delight. But I'm also yeah. thinking about uh, one of my favorite songs, totally dating myself, but the Double Dutch Bus, you know, rolling okay, down yeah. the street. You know, those kinds of things where it had these messages. It was fun. It was teaching, as you laid out, not too preachy, but it also had lessons and messages. Yes. So we got our old school. And then I, I guess we would call the next phase of the 80s, like the, the mid-80s into the 90s. Some experts say that that is the new school hip hop where you got Run DMC and LL J, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Coogee Rap. Yes. 
Public Enemy, Fight the Power. It was, it was very diverse, like late eighties, nineties. MC Light, you know. Yes, MC Light, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah, yes. When I listen to those kinds of songs, it's very clear what the messaging is. Yes. Now when we come up into the twenty first century, it's kind of hard no. to see the messaging anymore. <laughs> Terrible. What, what Terrible. are your thoughts about that? There is no message. <laughs> Today's hip hop is terrible. There's there's some. There's people like J. Cole, Kendrick, yes. they still they still stick to the truth, they like the, the art form. But the, for the most part, music is terrible. There's no message and I feel like everybody feel they can do it now. That's why. It's been so big that everybody wants to do it and a lot of people can't, but they feel they can infiltrate it. <laughs> Cause they see so many people like untalented people doing it, they say, Oh, well I can do this too. So they use it more as a hustle instead of a passion. Mm. So I think that's terrible. I think you should do it because you love, love to do it. Like anything you do, you should love to do it. And you put your all into it. You shouldn't do it just for a means to make money or a hustle. That's the, like the definition of a culture vulture. Do you think that culturally that rap could ever move back to that? To, to, that, um, to the foundation or yes. is it too commercial? I think, I think it could, but it's a problem because a lot of the people that we grew up listening to are backing up the trash music. That's the problem right there. They don't back up people that's true to hip hop. But I think they do it from a business standpoint, I guess. Because I think that's what the younger people want to listen to now. But for me, my message is I just want people to relate to the music. And I try to bring it bring it back to what it used to be. Well, you know, I'm going to continue to hold out hope with you that hopefully we can... That's what I'm trying to do. Go backwards to go forward. And yes, I would love to put on people more like me. But I see some people coming, kind of like Griselda, you ever heard of? No. The Griselda, um, kind of stick to the roots. They sound like more like a, like a Wu-Tang. Oh, I love me. the Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Yeah, so Wu-Tang. They, there's like little, there's little bits and pieces coming back. I think it's slowly coming back. So you, you're not out there alone in trying to keep alive that old school vibe, the yeah. the roots and origins of hip hop. I wouldn't say old school. Dude. People, people tell me that. They, they hear my music just because I can rap. They call me old school. I, I feel it's more timeless than old school. Okay, well, let's go and use timeless. But you know old school is... Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That means deep. Yeah. Not superficial. Deep. Yeah. No, vintage. Classic. Vintage. Okay, we're going to say vintage school. And what made you want to do the um podcast? You went from Bernie Sanders to um hip hop. <laughs> well, you know, I had a podcast before called We the People, and I've been a news commentator. So I've always tried to be engaged in things that would allow me to give voice to people's hopes and their dreams. And so podcasting is just another way to do it. So absolutely, when I was on the campaign, had no time for this kind of stuff. I mean, that's when the whole Hello Somebody was born. I was just inspired as I was giving my speech and I was looking out into the crowd and I saw their passion because it was right after Senator Sanders had a heart attack. And this was our first yeah. rally after the heart attack. So everybody was just full of hope and really happy that he recovered. And because yeah, I come from, you know, call and response is a big deal in the art form. And I wanted people to feel what I was saying, and I wanted them to respond. I wanted them to let me know. So since I didn't know everybody's name out there, I was just inspired to say, hello, somebody. And so the crowd just started saying, hello, somebody. My love for hip hop, I'm that vintage. Okay. People like Tupac, definitely. I mean, absolutely love, love, love love Tupac. I mean, famous when I was on the floor of the Senate as a state senator, I would quote Tupac on the floor of the Senate. My colleagues look, looking at me like I was crazy. Oh, yeah, we're going to bring some urban poetry to the floor yes. of the Ohio Senate. Got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. Hello, somebody. Yes. I mean, that was my thing. And I put him, you know, just as people always quote the founding fathers or the framers or this famous person or that famous person, a lot of times in our hip hop and our urban culture, people don't necessarily think that it is worthy of being quoted. They marveled at the fact that I was quoting Thomas Jefferson and Tupac Secure. You damn right I did. And <laughs> got That's more good. respect. It's relatable because you can, yeah. when you do that, you can relate to the youth. That's it. I mean, and it's a universal money for wars, but can't feed the poor. People can relate to exactly. that young and old, especially if you are poor and suffering. And so LL Cool J is my absolute favorite. 
You my, and your own brother. Your brother said the same thing. Yes, yes. And maybe we kind of rubbed off on each other, but I have a whole playlist of LL Cool J for my workout. So when I'm running the treadmill or jumping rope or boxing on my boxing bag, as I visualize people who work my last damn nerves, I'm listening to <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah, LL Cool J is one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest. To LL. And then as far as, you know, for deeper consciousness, certainly is public enemy, the Tupac yeah. type. Uh, Killer Mike, Michael Render, and I have become really good friends, and I listen to him a lot, too, and he goes deep. So I listen to him on his activist side, and then on his artist side as well. But the Run DMCs of the world, you know, Biggie, Mace. Yes. Yeah. Those are That's my... like not so much, because he talks about some of these issues, too. Yeah, yeah, he really does. And you're right, like, the people, Kendrick Lamar and some of the others are picking up on some of that tradition, and it's a beautiful thing to see. I'm not a... I love a good beat. But I think you and I may have in common words matter, and so yeah, I need some I substance. Think the words are the most important thing. Mm-hmm. They are. I, don't you need substance for your soul? I mean, it just yeah, can't be about sub- the beat. That's, that's what's missing today in hip hop. The substance. There's no content. Yeah, the let's content get some substance for our soul. Let's get substance for our soul. And that's, so and that's why when I pick my beats, I want the beats to have feeling to it. Come on. I don't want the beats to just because most of the beats now is just they all sound the same. No originality to it now we, i mean people need to make money there's nothing wrong with that especially yeah, if nobody gets hurt i, I don't believe that yes, people yes. should make money off of other people's misery you know what music is a is a lesson it's not only its own language but exactly. it teaches many lessons i think if they played more conscious music i think more people would be conscious i agree with if you. they because they play the same songs over and over they get it stuck in your head i feel like it brainwashes the youth the best is yet to come for you sir Really Thank you. Is. I really appreciate it. You are so welcome. It's an honor to be on your podcast. All right, baby. You take good care, darling. All right, you okay. too. Okay. It was so great having that dialogue with Famous. And you know what? He did something spectacular for Hello Somebody. Oh, my God. And I got to give a shout out to my brother because it was his idea. Don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him I gave him a shout out to my little brother who's bigger and taller than I am but I am the oldest baby but yes my brother had this idea and famous came through so I want you to listen intently to the hello somebody theme song baby this song this rap this art baby will make you move and groove take a listen The pain is numbing. Try to shoot for the stars if you gon' aim for something. Embrace the love for your brother and sister. Unity's the missing brush. We need to puzzle this picture. Let's paint it up, frame it up for the world to see. Hang the hatred up. Enough is enough is enough. Making changes on us. In Turner, her voice is the truth. Her wise words inspire the youth to keep their eyes on the roof. It's the end, never give up, keep conquering goals To the eye, intelligence, silver, wisdom is gold Back to the end, now is your time, stay firm, don't fold To the A, all you need is the three bones That's what Granny said Now I'ma make sure these words from Granny spread For all of here, just give her your ear She can take you to the promised land, I swear World peace is what they fear From Queens to Cleveland, Ohio, we here Famous